Well, good morning and welcome to Hillsborough UCC on this, the second Sunday of Advent. I'm Reverend Adam Hange and I'm the pastor here at Hillsborough First Congregational United Church of Christ and I am so glad you are joining us for our virtual worship today. Uh, we are an open and affirming global mission and immigrant welcoming church of the United Church of Christ. And as we prepare for this time of worship, I have just a few short announcements to make before we begin. First, I'd invite you to let us know if you're joining us by uh, liking our video or commenting in the chat section alongside. Um, invite you to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see this and other services and programming as it becomes available. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about our church, go to hillsboro-ucc.org and you can find out more about our denomination at ucc.org. I invite you to follow along in our digital bulletin today. We'll be linking that in the chat alongside of the video. If you have subscribed to our uh, weekly emails, you should also be getting that every week in your inbox. Um, today is a special celebration of Holy Communion. So if you haven't already, I invite you to gather together some elements, something to eat or drink as we partake in that ritual together. One of the beauty beauties of this moment is it reminds us that all of our tables are sacred, all of our meals are holy. And as we share this together, even across time and space, we remember the spirit that is with us each, uh, wherever we are. After our worship, I'd invite you to join us for our coffee hour on Zoom. It's at 11.30 and it's a great time to see old friends and make new ones, uh, share joys and concerns with one another. And uh, remember that we are all connected in the midst of all that's going on in our lives right now. Again, I want to say whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here today. I invite us now to quiet our hearts, quiet our minds, and center ourselves in God's peace. John the Baptist said, prepare the way. So family of faith, how do we prepare our minds for worship? We silence the inner critic. We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves up to be moved. How do we prepare our bodies for worship? We take in the scent, sight, and feel of this space. We breathe in God's mercy. We exhale God's love. How do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves into the space. We wear our hearts on our sleeves. We trust that even now God is here. Family of faith, what we practice in worship, we must live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way. Let us worship, holy God. Oh, 
I dream of the first pitch of opening season. I dream of a laundry day where each sock finds its mate. I dream of family home for the holidays. Mm. I dream of good books and homemade meals. I dream of sunset drives with the windows down. These are beautiful dreams, but I also have urgent dreams. I dream of conversations across party lines. Again. I dream of more bridges Again. and less walls. I dream of more laughter yeah. and less fear. Yeah. I dream of more listening and less tears. But most of all, I dream of peace like a river. Today, we light the candle of peace. Can I help? May it remind us that there is another way. Amen. Amen. Well, I know we are already into our second week of Advent, but um, today I wanted to take time to reflect upon this tradition, the lighting of Advent candles and the keeping of an Advent wreath. Now, this might be a tradition that you have in your family, or it might be something that's completely new to you. So I don't want to take anything for granted, but I want to explain that um, the first candle we light is the candle for hope. We lit that last week. Today, we lit the second candle, a candle for peace. Next week, we will light a candle, a pink candle for joy. And finally, we'll light a candle for love in the fourth week of Advent. And then on Christmas, on Christmas Eve, we'll light the Christ candle in the center. These candles help us keep time through the season of Advent, help us make preparation. And they're a stark contrast to the, the gift um, buying and the glitz and glamour that sometimes comes along with Christmas. They're a reminder to, to take this as a spiritual preparation this season. Now, uh, I've been following along in this book by Tracy Smith called Faithful Families, and it's it's great for rituals that you can practice in your home um, for people of all ages. And they have just a couple simple questions for us as we do this uh, ritual. First, they, they give some advice to, to make a, a set day and a time when you're going to 
gather around the wreath and light the candles. Maybe it's going to be on a Sunday, or maybe it's a Saturday, or maybe it's every night during the week, depending on your schedule. But sitting and gathering around the table and taking this time. As you light the candle for peace, the, uh, the invitation is just to ask a simple open-ended question. What does it mean to wait in hope during Advent? And seeing how that conversation goes. It could be quite different depending on the age of those gathered around the table. Uh, maybe the next time seeing, what does it mean to seek peace in Advent? And you ask these questions and over the years uh, the conversation will, will grow and change. But by making this ritual your own, you have an opportunity to take the meaning of Advent and and let it seep deep into you, that this season becomes a time of, of incredible spiritual renewal and, I hope, growth for you and your loved ones. Will you pray with me now as we end this time? God of Advent, we pray that you would kindle in us the light of hope and peace joy and love in this season. And however we celebrate it, we pray that you would bring meaning to our lives. Help us remember that this is about so much more than gifts under a Christmas tree. Help us remember that Christmas is about the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. Bless us, we pray, in your name. Amen. Holy God, I wish that peace was something I could buy. I wish that peace could be ordered in a subscription service, found on a map, downloaded in an app, or voted for in a ballot. I wish that peace was as easy as a one-time choice when I was feeling my best. However, what I have found is that peace involves everyday decisions over and over whether or not I am feeling my best. So today I confess in front of this community of faith that I need your help in this Advent season. Prepare the way for greater peace and teach me how to be a part of it. May God forgive you. May God's guiding hand surround you. May you know comfort. May you know peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now will you join me in our prayer for illumination? Let us pray. God of peace, we admit there are a million things on our minds. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist, preparing the way, gathering the crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we'd know peace, However, more often than not, we are a swirling compilation of grocery lists, text messages, emails, and over-referenced to-do lists. So today we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then will know peace. Gratefully we pray. Amen. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and all his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. At Advent, God's people summon the courage and the spiritual strength to remember that the holy breaks into the daily. In tiny ways, we can open our broken hearts to the healing grace of God, who opens the way to peace. May that peace come upon us as a healing balm, as a mighty winter river gushing and rushing through the valleys of our prideful fear and our own self-righteous indignation. And so we do not lose heart, Rather, we live with our hearts broken open so that compassion, caring, and God's reckless love can find a way into our hearts and the heart of the world. Make straight in our hearts a highway for the possibility of peace. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our help and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, on this, the second Sunday of Advent, we are greeted by one who dreams, by none other than our old friend from Sunday school, John the Baptist. John enters our story as a lonely voice crying out from the margins of the wilderness, saying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This perhaps familiar refrain is, is more than a lyric from Handel's Messiah. It is a call to repentance 
and transformation, an invitation to dream anew. In the context of our Advent journey, it's a reminder that this season, in addition to being a time to decorate and send cards and share gifts, is also a time set aside for repentance, a time for turning, a time for renewal in preparation for the arrival of the Christ child at Christmas. It's a call that echoes our other scripture passage from Isaiah 40, which speaks of the coming of the promised one and says, at that time, every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low, and uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Well, this week I've been meditating on that image, the highway of God, and wondering what it might teach us about peace and seeking peace on this, the second Sunday of Advent in this most peculiar year, 2020. As I was thinking about this, I realized I know a little something about highways. For you see, there is a highway called Route 30, which runs more than 3,000 miles from Astoria, Oregon to Atlantic City, New Jersey, and on its way passes through Mansfield, Ohio, right past my childhood home. And that portion of Route 30 provided the soundtrack for my childhood. And I think of the on-ramps and off-ramps, the hills and curves and dips, and all of them are imprinted on my, my memory. And I think about how when I was 16 and I was finally able to drive, I remember that ODOT, the Ohio Department of Transportation, began to build a Route 30 bypass around the west side of that nearby town. And I remember seeing these huge earth movers cutting great furrows in the hillside, building up huge mounds of earth for berms and overpasses. These machines were quite literally lifting up every valley and making low every hill for me and my baby blue Ford Taurus station wagon and so many other cars to make our way more smoothly and speedily on to the next town. Well, here's the thing about highways. They are not built overnight. That bypass took years and years, maybe decades, to complete from planning to completion. I remember several years later on a Christmas break from college, I was driving home on that Route 30 from Chicago on a particularly snowy night, and that portion of the highway was still under construction. I remember miles and miles of construction cones and shifting lanes and crews out working late into the night under artificial lights, even in the cold of winter, working to complete that next portion of the road. But of course, the, the preparation involved in making a highway requires shifting the landscape, cutting through hills and mountains, filling up valleys and bridging gaps, rerouting other roads, preparing the way for a highway to pass through is neither simple nor easy. But what a glorious thing it is when finally the rough places are made plain. As I was reading this passage this year and hearing it in the context of 2020 and the many, many rough places of this year, I couldn't help but connect the call to raise every valley and, and, and lower every mountain couldn't help but hear that in the context of the plea by our health officials to flatten the curve. The curve is, of course, the, the graph of confirmed cases of novel coronavirus, a graph, a graph which now has three waves, each higher than the last, and has curved into exponential growth with the onset of cooler weather and increased fatigue over uh, coronavirus restrictions. Oregon has, has just reached 
the sad milestone of 1,000 deaths. And there was a day this last week when the U.S. lost more people in one day to COVID than they lost in the 9-11 attacks. As hospitals have filled up and staff have become overwhelmed, we've been urged to help flatten the curve of COVID by staying home, limiting our interactions with people outside of our household, wearing masks, washing hands. And even though state guidelines permit faith gatherings, we believe the best way to love ourselves and our neighbors in this moment is to continue to gather remotely. But this is a hard thing to do. Many of us changed our plans for Thanksgiving. Many are worried that our plans for Christmas will also be changed. We want to gather. We want to celebrate. And yet right now we stay home so that when we gather again, we know no one will be missing. Somehow in the midst of all that's going on in our world right now, Advent calls us to peace, to seek peace, to find peace. But I don't know about you, but no amount of breathing exercises and mindfulness or pine needles and pumpkin spice, no amount of Christmas music or Christmas cheer is going to give me the kind of peace that I'm longing for this season. I know that temptation towards self protection and wanting to shut out anything that disturbs my own personal peace. And there's perhaps a time for that, that when that might be self-care. I also know that if everyone did that all of the time, the progress towards peace in our world would be very, very slow. I'm really wondering about what it means to seek peace in the midst of this year, this time. But Advent reminds us that God's time is not our time. Reminds us that waiting in hope, even for a long time, is not wasted. If it's time spent in preparation. There's a protest sign that you might have seen that reads, No justice, no peace. Meaning that until there is justice, we're not going away. Then if you flip the sign over, it says on the other side, no justice and no peace, K-N-O-W. Perhaps one way we prepare the way for the, the peace we seek is to continue to work for justice in our world, to work for peace in solidarity with one another. At this particular moment, the curve that needs flattened is the curve of COVID infection rates. And so together we work for peace for ourselves and for one another by helping flatten that curve. And I wonder if true and lasting peace, the kind of world peace that we pray for, the peace that we talk about at Christmas that comes from the Prince of Peace, if that's what we really want, then I wonder if there are other curves that will need flattened as well. You can think about the curve of inequality in this country and around the world. Perhaps we should think about flattening that curve too. I, I think about the impending eviction crisis that's about to overwhelm this country, brought on by the economic impact of the pandemic, but already a problem in our world, in our nation. And I think, too, about the inequality between countries, developed countries versus undeveloped or underdeveloped countries. And while I'm grateful that the vaccines are rolling out in places like the United States and Europe, I'm concerned that other poorer countries might be left behind. I'm concerned that the pandemic response and related economic relief for some will only exacerbate the disparities and inequities that others face. Perhaps preparing the way for peace means working to flatten the curve of disparity in access to health care. You see, there's more than one valley to raise and one curve to flatten. 
in the path towards peace with justice. We light a candle for peace each Advent, knowing full well that the peace that we seek doesn't magically appear on December 25th. Rather, the child born in Bethlehem arrives for us again and again to point us to a new way of being. And that new way of being helps create a world at peace. It's a peace that comes with time and intention. When we let the good news of this story filter down into our very being and filter out through us into the world. Tracy Blackman, Associate General Minister of Justice and Local Church Ministries for the UCC writes, preparing the Lord's path means challenging systems and structures that we have institutionalized as normal, but that God condemns as oppressive and crooked. It means clearing the path of self-aggrandizement, self-absorption, and greed to make way for a community where all of creation is valued. This Advent, what if we're being called to more than candle lighting? What if we're being called to prepare the way for God's love and liberation to be heard, shouted, and received across all creation? This kind of preparation isn't the work of a moment. It isn't the work of a weekend or a semester or three years, like the capital campaign that we just finished. It's more like the cumulative work of gathering together Christmas decorations over the years. It's more like the work of building a highway. And with time and intention and planning and sustained commitment, we believe in faith that the vision of peace draws ever closer, ever closer with each year. Today we light a candle and pray for that peace, knowing full well that peacemaking is never as easy as lighting a candle. And yet the candle is a beginning. It is a prayer that we pray, a dream that we dream, for the day when righteousness and peace will kiss and faithfulness will spring up from the ground. As I close, I invite you to think about those who have dreamed of peace and those who have prepared the way for peace. Reflect on the question, what did that look like? What did it require of them? And as we await the Emmanuel, God with us, how are you, how are we called to prepare the way for that kind of peace? Will you pray with me now? Oh, great dreamer, we believe that a voice cried out in the wilderness saying, prepare the way of the Lord. And so we show up for worship even from home. We march toward justice. We roll up our sleeves. We plant trees for our children. We make art. We choose hope. We gather at the table. We set an extra plate. We sing loudly with joy. We share stories and wisdom. We celebrate with children. We fall together. We rise together. We love together. We do all these things because we believe that God loves us so much that God shows up here. So we prepare and prepare for the next beautiful day. May it be so. Amen. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel.
Now we come to a time when we lift up our prayers together. We invite you, if you have a prayer that you'd like to share, a praise, a thanksgiving, or a prayer petition, to add it in the comments alongside of the video or the chat. And if you have a prayer that is private, I invite you to send it to me by email or go to our website and submit it at the prayer request button there. And now let us quiet our hearts, quiet our minds, and join together with one voice in prayer. Holy One, as heralds of your good tidings, we lift up our voices with strength this day, praying to the one who comforts, restores, and heals. We pray for all leaders and people of the world. You have created one human family to live in righteousness and peace so we ask you to give us the wisdom to order our common life according to your loving purposes, that your glory may be revealed and all people shall see it together. We pray for your church. You have given us the gift of the Messiah so that your church may be steadfast and true. Grant us strength to follow your Son until all have come to repentance and are reconciled to and by Christ's love. We pray today for those who are sick and those who suffer need, those who are exiled or in danger. We remember that you have made us for a holy purpose, to comfort and care for each other. So we pray that you'd give us compassion to love our neighbor and the patience to care for those in need. We pray for your creation. Your faithfulness springs up from the ground and your goodness looks down from the sky. And so we pray, rid us of the laziness and greed that diminish life as you teach us to care for your creation together. And God, on this day when there is so much grief and loss across our nation and the world, we Remember those who have died. Ever-living God, one day in your presence is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. So we pray, make us one with the saints who have found their eternal home in you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. God, we lift up to you these prayers and others left unspoken, knowing that you hear and you answer according to your wisdom and your grace. And now we are bold to join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into a time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In devotion to God, we offer the gifts of our lives and our labor for the building up of the beloved community, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord's offering will now be received. Now I invite you to join together in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. God of abundant blessing, you have given us good things and caused the land to yield its increase. We now dedicate our gifts to you. May your righteousness go before us, preparing a pathway for Christ's love and peace. We pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. now receive this blessing and benediction. As you go from this time, may you have the strength to dream. Wild dreams of justice and peace and joy that overflows. May you have the humanity to listen to the dreams of others. May you have the confidence to trust that the God who heard the cries 
of the people hears your dreams as well. And may you have the conviction to return to this space, for our best dreams are those we dream together. In the name of God, the original dreamer, Jesus, the dream come true, and the Holy Spirit who enables us to be those who dream, go in peace, go in love. Amen. Thank you.